Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of every single Premier League match week and a little bit of the Champions League as well. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are the topics for today's episode. We're certainly going to preview the two big matches this weekend, Everton versus Liverpool and Man City versus Arsenal. We kind of assess the Premier League as a whole really after the first four match weeks and we discuss the latest on Project Big Picture. Uh, that's what we've got coming up on today's show. All right, Robbie, uh, uh-huh. well, Merseyside, Liverpool. Uh, yeah. Well, wow, lots of football news, lots of football mm. interest um, in the city just recently, but particularly yeah. this week, much awaited Merseyside derby. Yeah. Um, really kind of contrasting, I guess, feelings from, from the red and the blue part of Liverpool. Everton now with as much enthusiasm, hope, mm actual enjoyment through the yeah. first four games uh, mm-hmm. four, four they've won Rob is a great yeah. start for them against the Liverpool side humiliated really against Aston Villa with that 7-2 yeah. beat last time out I'll tell you what mate I, I'm really looking forward to mm. what I think going to be a great game of football it's one of those Robin and I know we've said it on a number of occasions that the, the, the Leeds Liverpool game that came up and, and you know some of the, the great games we've seen in this very early part of the Premier League but God, wouldn't this be great with fans? Wouldn't this be oh, great at yeah. uh, Goodison yeah. Port with the fans in there? And was yeah. it the best start for Everton in, in 51 years? Four wins in, in, in four out of the first four, playing with a confidence, playing with a swagger, scoring goals, looking defensively strong. A manager who's in charge of a football club that's no nonsense, that gets down to business, that people understand the responsibilities in there accountability at this football club that, that I haven't seen for, for some while so it, it, it's it's a great one to look forward to as you say where, where the two clubs are how they've started the last couple of last results we, we've just had I mean what a way to, to kick back into the Premier League um, massive game on at 7 a.m eastern time on NBC SN the, the, the Merseyside derby it's always big it just feels bigger now because Everton come in Rob as healthy as I can remember them yeah, that's right. I mean, that's the news, isn't it? It looks like, and we, you know, of course, we won't know until a little bit nearer the time. Mm-hmm. It looks like Alan is fit. It looks like Andre yeah. Gomez is said he's definitely going to be okay for the game. James, you know, to to, to look at the Corey has been great as well. It'd be mm-hmm. so good to get that almost new, yeah, total new midfield against Liverpool um, to, to to kind of. It's a real litmus test of where they're yeah. at. And this is going yeah, to be a, a difficult game for them. I mean, that's the kind of team news for Everton. Looks like they're they mm-hmm. the guys are going to be fit. Yeah. Um, excuse me, Calvert Lewin has been in sensational form, which will help him. Um, he's been mm. away with the national team as well, yeah. so that helps his confidence. Getting minutes for the for the national team is fantastic. Um, it's going to be a real handful for Liverpool, Rob. And yeah. given what they've shown us over, well, the the four games of the Premier League season, some yeah. good and some bad. What I would mm. say about this game is that. And this is kind of what I feel about, maybe we talked about it on the last show, is that when Liverpool are not at it with yeah. their energy and their press, that mm. high line is a vulnerability. That, that's yeah. simple. That, that's been, been shown out now in a couple of games, Leeds, the Leeds mm. game and the Villa game, where if midfield players from the opponents can look forward, Rob, and get their heads up, they're yeah. going to play balls in behind. And Liverpool are going yeah. to try and play this offside trap, which has been a bit of a disaster for them. But... Because it's the derby, because yeah. you got to think Liverpool after that are mm. going to be at it, Rob, with, with the pressurising yeah. and, and the closing down. I wouldn't think they would allow Everton the time yeah. and space in midfield to clip balls over the top. But if they do, they're going to be in trouble because in James Rodriguez particularly and in Joe Gomez, they've got mm. players that can spot a forward ball, a ball in behind. Um, but Liverpool, I mean, surely, Rob, Liverpool won't let that happen in this game, will they? No, uh, and and I think yeah, I remember I watched a highlight package just of the Liverpool defeat to to Aston Villa, and I think what becomes so obvious, Rob, is that as you're watching the game, you realise this is so different from everything that we've become used to seeing about Liverpool. There's something about that energy and that drive that is pretty much consistent every week, win as they often done, draw or lose. And so when when it when it doesn't happen, it stands out like, like a sore thumb. And, and I think you're right. I think that gets addressed. Interested in possibly um, personnel. Is Fabinho 
a better partner mm. for Virgil van Dijk at the moment. Joe Gomez hasn't been in brilliant form. Arnold has not been in great form since we, we, we started this season. Mm. Is there, you know, with, with Calvert Lewin Central, with Charleston's pace and ability to come mm. from one side, Hamas Rodriguez's clever play from the other, that could give Liverpool's backline all kind of problems. Trent Alexander Arnold, Rob, everybody agrees he's fantastic mm. going yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. And the delivery, the vision, his right foot, free kicks, etc. Yeah. Set piece is brilliant. Yeah. Against Richarlison, he's got a, he's got a job on. Richarlison mm -hmm. yeah. is stronger than him. Yeah. Has got tremendous kind of desire and mm -hmm. emo he plays with emotion, doesn't he? To get in yeah. that back. Yeah. Yeah. has got a really interesting day, Rob, because if he doesn't mm -hmm. stand up and yeah. match those runs and be physical and defend yeah. him and track him and do him one v one. Mm -hmm. Chuck him at the back post. Richarlison yeah, is one he's of the on headers, isn't he? Yeah. Headers at the back post from the when mm. the ball's on the other side. So it's a great test for him. It's a great point you make as well about Fabinho because right now, I mean, it depends on Thiago. So we yeah. we'll get into that now. Now, now Liverpool <clears throat> with the COVID 19, they've had mm. some problems. They've had some issues. Yeah, well, the whole area, haven't we? We heard from Boris <clears throat> Johnson that you know, it's on lockdown again, basically. Yeah. It's been one of the biggest rises in the country and football, you know. Unfortunately, it is part of that. Yeah, Sadio Mane might not play. Thiago might not play. Yeah, uh, Naby Keita, another Naby one. Naby Keita, yeah, has been affected. Now, mm. you know, again, this is a few days out. Um, this is yeah. a Wednesday, of course. The weekend's a big game. Mm -hmm. Some of those might have suffered, like, isolated or in time for the game. But yeah. if Thiago can play, it's got to be tempting to play him in the Fabinho role and Fabinho back alongside Van Van Dijk for the back four. Jordan Henderson's had a bit of time with England, so uh, he's probably closer to, to see. He might be as okay well. to play. Yeah, you know, with Ronaldo in that next to him. So he, would you expect for Fabinho? Would you play him instead of Gomez right now? I think I might, Rob. I, I think having seen what we saw in the game against Leeds, having seen the relationship between him and Van Dyke, it, it might just look a little steadier. And when when you think of Gomez and Trent Alexander Arnold, possibly on the right hand side of the pitch. I don't think both have particularly started this season well. Almost no. like the experience and maturity of Fabinho might yeah. just be something that helps that back line a little bit. Yeah, and and, and trying to thwart Calvert Lewin, who has been yeah, exactly wiped out, but absolutely wiped out. Yeah, absolutely. Just, handful. just on a few a few other kind of team issues, Rob. Yeah, Jordan Pickford at Everton mm. uh, is not is not done well. Is not done no. well. Now, late deals for Robin Olsen on loan from Roma yeah. right at the end of the window, Rob. Puts pressure Absolutely. on Jordan Pickford. Yeah. Last seconds or, or yeah. a little bit of overtime yeah. to get that in. Do you think that that's going to help Jordan Pickford? Is it going to kind of define him a little bit in terms of this season, whether he can, can step up now and be mature and, and, and find a level of consistency? Or is Robin Olsen just a few games and a couple of mistakes from playing? Well, First of all, I have to say, I think it's a brilliant move by the by the manager. I think it's a brilliant move by the manager. Yeah. Just when Jordan Pickford was sitting at home in the transfer mo uh, window, having a yeah. glass of wine with his <laughs> wife, boom, right on the last moment, a goal <laughs> his tea. Yeah, a goal exactly. becomes a thing. I mean, I can imagine Mrs. Pickford was out in the garden smashing some <laughs> balls by him and he was getting his hands clean. He's going to have some work on. But yeah. in, in terms of that, I, I totally... I slightly disagreed with, with Tim Howard. Tim said that Pickford's the number one and this guy, he felt coming to be a number two and, you know, well, wouldn't know his role. I said, I don't think you make a decision like that that late on for just a number two. I think you make a decision for a guy who can be number one. And I think Jordan Pickford has the gloves. Jordan Pickford is the club's number one. But I don't think there'll be any shadow of a doubt if, if he makes continues to make mistakes continues yeah. to not play at the level that his manager wants, we'll see a change. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, to, to do that last minute, it's a little bit like the Dean Henderson situation, come yeah. back on loan, and Dave De Gea is number one, but you you yeah. you make two or three bad errors, yeah. it's going to change, yeah. and there'll be a change. I think it's exactly the same at Everton. Listen, who knows if Robin Olsen is going to be up or or. Well, people in. tell me he's good enough to play in this level. He's not right. one of those that's a, just a number two. I hear from people that, that he's good enough to play. And yes. maybe yeah. what won't help Jordan pick for the game, I don't know if you saw the England game today uh, against Denmark, but he, he kind of came rushing out of his goal, got caught up in a situation yeah, with Cal Walker, and yeah. the penalty was, was given. And again, you know, just yeah. sometimes feel that 
Jordan Pickford has to chill a little bit, not not be yeah. so erratic around his 18-yard box. Just finally on this game, mate, and there's, yeah. we're going to switch to the other goalkeeper. We're going to get into some predictions about this game, Rob, but Adrian. Yes, my friend. Is, is, uh, I mean, th this game, like, in terms of the oh. goalkeepers, oh. You know, there's not a lot of confidence. I, I was surprised that, that Liverpool didn't do a similar thing to Everton. Go and yeah. get one late. I was, was surprised. Rumor, Rob, wasn't, there? wasn't there, I seem to remember, like, a strong the rumor, rumor about, or a late Yeah, yeah Gazaniga, I think they were talking more, and, and one or two yeah. others. Yeah, and then not, yeah, nothing, nothing happened in the end. Which, obviously, uh, Jurgen Klopp believes in Allison. I'm not sure. I I don't totally believe in it. I'm not sure he's back for believing him. And more than importantly, if I was playing against Liverpool, I'd be saying this goalkeeper is not all that. By the way, we can affect him. We can affect him from balls in the box. We can affect him from the way he handles things. We can affect him from his confidence. And it, and if he makes a mistake in the first fifteen or twenty minutes, Rob. We've got a long time for, for a derby to play out. You said it, mate, in, in your first line. I, I tell you what, if this if this was a packed Goodison Park, yeah, given their start, given yeah. our journey goal, given mm. the pressure that he's going to be in yeah. under, given that this is a maybe a really good time to, to play Liverpool. This this for me in trying to get onto predictions, Robert, what, what yeah. happens. I can't remember a time that that I'm I'm really close to tipping Everton to win this game, Rob. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, with the conference, well, it looks like the players are back. Yeah. You know, I with the way they're going. Of course, when Liverpool, if they switch it on, if they switch it mm -hmm. right up to 100 percent of effort and stuff, it's hard yeah. to see them lose the game. But I I'd be tempted to just edge Everton in this derby, and I wish there were fans there. But I'm going to go with it. I'm going to stick with Everton for the game. What do you think? Well. I think a lot depends on on personnel. I think the Villa game, you, you lose Allison at the back, you lose Henderson midfield, you lose Mane as a striker. I think they're three key people yeah. as well as players to the football club. We know Allison won't be there. Possibly Henderson's fit and, and Mane. Well, well, obviously we'll, we'll see over the next coming days. I tend to think Liverpool don't lose this game. Yeah. That's what I'll say. I think I'm probably not convinced they win it, but I don't yeah. think they lose it. I yeah, I, I think the draw is, is the most likely is yeah. the most likely outcome. Mm -hmm. But if there was to be a winner, yeah, yeah. which would you go for? I, I've I, I'll just go with Everton. I mean, this I'll, is very early with that I'll team. Is. based yeah. on what happened before the before yeah, the and the reaction, and the yeah. reaction that he'll have. There'll be yeah. absolutely no way yeah. that he will have another poor performance and he'll yeah. know that getting back, you know, another poor performance, a defeat at Everton starts to ask questions then. Mm -hmm. I mean, you lose three games all the last season, your first one not till February and winning the title last year. All of a sudden mm -hmm. you've lost two within the first five weeks. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, starts yeah. asking you know, maybe some of those, you know, days where they, they're not going to turn up are going to happen on a more frequent basis. So, no, mm -hmm. I'm, I think they'll be at it enough. I think there'll be enough on the pitch to just maybe see them through. Yeah, it should be great. Other big yeah. game this weekend, of course. <clears throat> this is 12.30 uh, mm. Eastern Time on NBC on the Saturday. Uh, that's Man City versus Arsenal, Robin. Mikel Arteta, of course, leaving mm. Pep as assistant to go and manage Arsenal. Yeah. And I think everybody, everybody realises what a good job he's doing, given yeah. how big a job it was, Rob. Yeah. We spoke for months yeah. about how, my goodness, how hard this job is going to be with with some of the issues getting yeah. uses at the football club Ozil's not played a minute since restart no. after, after after initially being in his plans that pretty much confirms that yeah. Meza Ozil is 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 not yeah. training well he's not applying himself correctly different managers they've given him opportunities so that's incredibly disappointing for the Arsenal fans uh, I would think but let's move forward and, and yeah, this team is evolving yeah. and tactically they're pretty grooved pretty grooved just mm. better defensively you know the basics better and thomas Partey is the new player rob and, oh, and he was the, the deadline day signing of 55 million dollars oh. that's going to make a difference isn't he oh massive difference rob i think he's he, he, he's a game changer for arsenal he's what this football club have needed for the last four or five years we can go back to the Wenger oh. time he didn't yep. quite find another one back in the in from the Vieira and, and Petit mold. He never really got that guy in the centre midfield who you can build on, who can sit in front of a back four, who can break the play up. 
there was talk that they looked at Kante at Chelsea, never quite got, got that done. But as much as it's interesting, the club's moving away from Mesut Ozil and, and, mm. and such, who was a big part of still what Wenger did. Unai Emery tried to uh, get him into his teams. Mikel Arteta's come, he's had a look and decided, you know what, we've got to go a different direction. And I think Mesut Ozil trains with Gunnosaurus now because he pays him all his wages. So those two have, have a bit of a kick around together. But that's about as close as he's getting to, to any first team action. Thomas Partey is an integral part of what Mikel Arteta is going to do at this football club. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's that strong. I think he's that big. He's that important to what he does. Mm -hmm. I watched some stuff on tape, Rob. You go and look at him. Wow. He can do a bit yeah. of everything, by the way. Yeah, I, 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 I took a big interest in him, Rob, in the Champions League mm. uh, over recent seasons, actually, and, yeah. and, and what he did in midfield. Yeah. Because, you know, we don't, we don't see La Liga every week. Yeah. And it's hard to really get Mm. A good sense of so many different players, and all of a sudden yeah. they come into the Premier League, and you want to. Yeah. But but he's one that I remember because yeah. I like what he did. He mm. was in the. He was just one of those quietly in the right spot, intercepting yeah. board, making yeah. tackles, very safe on the board. He's not. He's not a. He's not going to be one of them that's going to spray yeah, the board. Right? Rest, he's, you know, yeah. he's not going to be that guy. But but mm. just what they need. We've said it, Rob, on this show for a while that that Granit Xhaka is okay. He had yeah. that, that awful kind of time at Arsenal. Yeah. It looked like he might not play again. He's come back pretty well, but he ain't good enough. For mm -hmm. the places that Arsenal wants to go, he wants somebody better than that. Better yeah. defensively, more reliable, less less um, risky, some of the challenges and stuff. Yeah. So this it is a big get. And obviously, I don't know, it was a last minute thing. You know, maybe they were going for, I think there's a couple of other players, Rob, that they were going for. Yeah, that didn't pan out, so they went back to the, this Thomas Partey mm. paying the um the release clause. And kindness, Rob, they, they knew their it. business, though. They knew that the clause was in there, they worked it properly, the timing was right. Atletico couldn't particularly do anything about it. The deal was done, yeah. the player was in London. It was like well played, I do, and the staff. And I know they've, they're moving things around in, in the background, but you just feel as though things are heading in the right direction on and off the pitch of the football club. It's been streamlined in a way that we've not seen before. I always, and I, I tell the story, our viewers probably have heard it a couple of times, but I remember going to watch the Arsenal team do an open training session at the LA Galaxy in LA, close to me, and I, I went up uh, just to watch a bit of training, saw a couple of faces, you know, and, and had a couple of interviews, and I couldn't believe how many people were inverted commas, on the outside, just staff. And, and it, I remember saying to Dicko, there's too many. There's only <laughs> too many people around, you know. And, and, and I think, Ed, and funny enough, Eddie was there that night I was talking to, and he was just talking. And I think I said to you, what a really impressive guy. He's got a real vision of what he wants to do. And I think we're starting to see that. He's leaned the business up. He's streamlined it. They're getting two, you know, better recruitment. As you've talked about for, for many years, you know, get good players in your football club, you give yourself a chance. And it looks yeah. like they're starting to do that. Yeah, and, and we know that Arteta now is not the head coach, he's the manager. Mm. And between yeah. him and Edu, that's it. That They're mm. making the calls. It, yeah. and, and really, if you trust the guys in charge, of, that's kind of the best way really to work. Yeah. It can be risky. Yeah. It's been risky guys, at, at United, where they've given mm. trust to certain managers, they bring their own players in, it doesn't work out. Then the next guy comes in and brings his own players mm. in. So there's risk to it. But I yeah. think what we've seen already, and maybe Arsenal board just said, let's just see the guy work. And they've been impressed enough to, to say, you know what? You and Edu, you figure yeah. out the recruitment. So now we know who decides the players. That's going to be fun to watch. And the project will move forward. And slow, yeah. definite improvements like Thomas mm. Partey yeah. is the way to go. Quality, not necessarily quantity, to mm. make this first 11 better. So it's, it's great business. And, and on, on to Man City, Rob. Ruben Diaz. Ruben yeah. Diaz, uh, yeah. Looks good. We just saw yeah. one game against Leeds, yeah. the one one draw. It looked decent. Mm. I mean, a crazy, unbelievable game of, of yeah. no team defending yeah. from both sides. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you, to you almost have to give that one a, a pass and think about the next ones. Yeah, it's not going to be as crazy as that. I mean, is good he, on the ball as you'd expect. He, he's going to make enough difference for him. Back. Good player. So again, you, you start to do a bit of research. You start to find out a little bit about him. Just one thing I want to throw out there early. The majority, I would say, seven or eight times out of ten, when he makes a challenge, he goes to ground rob. That's what yeah. I found. Now, he's one of them who loves to block, and he's, he's quite, you know, he's a good defender and, and mm -hmm. gets his body in the way. But I just saw a few times where I thought, 
the clever Jamie Vardy's, the, the Harry Kane's will see that and let him come sliding and touch a ball and wait to go down. It mm. might just be something he's got to address in his game because he looks a wonderful talent. He looks like he wants to be a defender first and foremost, which I like. But he mm. might just have to watch those sliding tackles. Something just to keep an eye on as he goes because the speed of the Premier League and the cleverness of, of forwards who know he's coming you know, mm. Jamie Ward is the master at, at time in yeah. tying those players in and, and, and going down. Yeah, and I think City are in the middle of trying to basically just reshuffle the back four up mm. you know, with, yeah. with Nathan Ake and now Diaz. Yeah. You know, who knows who his best left back is or who he feels that is. Um, yeah. Had a nightmare, Benjamin Mendy in the last game. Yeah, but, I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's for long term. Yeah, so and then, then the other end of the pitch as well. I think I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure we're going to see Aguero and Jesus in this game, Rob, this weekend against no, Arsenal. Sure. Uh, yeah, if who's going to play? A big miss, Rob. And I know people yeah. go on about him, and, and you know goals have gone in or whatever. He still delivers you at a rate and at a at a level that no one else in that football club can. And I know mm -hmm. Jesus is, is the heir apparent in trying and has got a decent record. He's goals per games. But there's mm. something just about when Aguero's there that's different. Yeah, yeah, there is, and, and and we've talked about it. This is this is another game to to assess Pep mm. for me, yeah. Rob, yeah. and and where and we City. are with Pep. Yeah, yeah. and City, you know, is mm. this is it going to kick on again? Yeah, is it going to slowly dwindle a little bit? And that's what yeah. my fear has been for yeah. quite a while now. Is that if it didn't start well? You know, yeah. you're going to feel like, well, this is Pep's last year. They didn't do a ton in the market. Um, but again, this is just another yeah. another data point. Arsenal, well, well, yeah, and, and I think the Pep personality, we've seen a, a bit of a different Pep, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit jokey, a little bit open. Is like the same guy that's driving the team, you know, in the probably not his best, is he? It's probably not his best when he's like that, Rob, is he? No, I'm not it sure doesn't seem be, so, because that's not what we've seen when we've seen winning Pep, who... Yeah. who you know, can can be win a game three one and be talking about the goal they conceded and how they didn't control things. So really interesting, just in terms of how he is over this next bit. It's an it's an important part of the season, Rob. I just think that this little spell between now and Christmas kind of sets you up for where you're going to be. And you know, teams like City have to get back on winning, winning, winning again yep. to, to, to kind of get themselves back to that level. I think they will. What do you reckon? Prediction. Um. Not convinced. No, I'm not. I, I, I can't. Not convinced. I mean, what we've seen so far, yeah. And what what Arsenal have shown us in terms of different ways to win, they've shown us that they can they can lock it yeah. down a little bit. Um, yeah, they beat City I, I, in, the, in the FA Cup as well, didn't they? Was it yeah. Cup end of last season? I might just favour Arsenal on this. Um, if, again, mm. you know, when, when these yeah. like, like the Everton game and uh, Liverpool, yeah. the draw probably is the most likely mm. outcome. But if there is yeah. a winner. I'm going to go for mm. Arsenal. Yeah, I wasn't sure as well with, with fitness. I mean, key players, Sterling yeah. involved with England. De Bruyne, I think, came off against yeah. Liverpool yeah. the other day. So, no, yeah, a couple more of those, those, big, those big things. But, uh, yeah, another really interesting one is uh, Arteta goes up against Pep, um, a, a big game, 12.30 Eastern time on NBC. Yeah. So, just before we finish up, mate, we, well, just a little a feeling on, on where we are since the transfer window last shot, where teams are in terms of what they got, what they didn't get, what their ambitions should be. I'm thinking more particularly, Rob, down at, at the bottom of the table, a couple of clubs who I think we both in the past felt, well, certainly I'm more with, with Burnley felt, they'll be okay. They've got a guy in charge. They've got a system. They've got a way of playing that, that will, will gather them enough points. With Sheffield United and Burnley, um, both no points at the moment in, in, in the Premier League. Sheffield United did do a bit of business, got in R Ryan Brewster uh, for about £20 million, I think it was £20 million um, pounds to, to bring in a player who we know can score at championship level and has got a good reputation, but still relatively untried in, in, from Premier League, Liverpool have allowed that deal to go through with a with a buyback if it comes good. So good business, I think, for Liverpool. Burnley, actually, nobody through the door. I think Dale Stevens, yeah, for one million dollars from Brighton. I mean, Dale Stevens shirts are flying out of the. Um, <laughs> the <Burnley laughs> shop, I'm sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I said it at the start. I think Burnley are going to be in relegation mm. fight. 
job. You mm. can't. I mean, maybe you can, and, and you, and maybe you're right. Maybe Sean Dyche will find a way. Ashley Barnes is fit again. Yeah. Chris Wood's good for mm. 14, maybe 15 yeah. goals in the Premier League season. Others, there's, you know, chip in defensively. They're very sound. They're very. So, of course, I get all that. But yeah. I'm saying Burnley, not ju not just based on players leaving and very few coming in, but also on, on what others have done. What others yeah. have done, your mm. Aston Villas, your Newcastle yeah. Uniteds, mm. you know, Brighton's that have developed. You know, we know, we know, you know, that Fulham and West Brom are going to be in a fight. We know yeah. that, but there's got to be somebody yeah. else because I think Leeds mm. are going to be okay. And it's just when you, Crystal Palace have made some good signings, Rob. So you, yeah. it's just like my deduction. Well, who's who yeah. it going to be? And I look at Burnley. I know that they had, I think, they had fifty odd, fifty-two or fifty-four points last season. They were they were yeah. top. Yeah. Yeah. They were top yeah. powerful yeah. Players, yeah. I just think this season they might surprise people and really struggle to get out of it. But but that's yeah. just me. I think Sheffield United, just for the record, I still think they're going to be fine. Yeah, uh, you know, Ryan, uh, uh, Brewster, you know, they've bought three or four strikers in the last couple of. It, yeah, he, Olive he, Bird. Trusts, he yeah. trusts the majority of his mm -hmm. team. Um, he just likes to mix it up with the strikers, and I know they've they've yeah. had an awful start. Not that tough fixtures, by the way. I looked at the fixtures. No, just really. Yeah, not great. My, my I, think worry, I think is it O'Connell who, who's got injured with the knee injuries yeah. out for majority yeah. of the season. That's one of the yeah. back three. Yeah. The other thing I think as well, Rams um, Ramsdale's come in for Henderson. So yeah, I don't think he's bit, not as good. No, there's, there's been a little bit of a, of a change back there, and, and and that back three and the goalkeeper was the base on what they did everything going forward and the overlapping centre backs. Just what you know. Almost like that's got to be repaired or, or get back to its standard to for, to allow the rest of the team. So I certainly see, I don't see them getting relegated, but I don't see them quite having the season that they had, um, Sheffield United. I think, they, you know, they, they're going to have the, the odd off, off day. Anything happened so far yet, Rob, in terms of the relegation picture that makes you change your mind, given what you thought, you know, back at the start of the season? I know um, three or four I'm games in. I've had to, in Sean Dutch we tr trust. Really? I've had to. I've had to. Did you have to start, Rob? Do you think Southampton? I had Fulham, West Brom, Southampton. Right. I look at Southampton and with a little bit of business done and, and the goal threat that he continues to give him, Danny Ings, I'm probably just looking at, at Burnley. And I'll tell you why I, I, I'm more with Burnley. Less about that they didn't do anything. More about Sean Dyche. He seems to me like he's in a, a bit of a pet place. Like we're looking for hundreds of players, and we'll see who comes in. And some of his his retorts almost tell me he's really frustrated that he's not been able to go and spend a little bit of money. You can't tell me Burnley can't go to the Championship, Rob, and spend uh, uh, thirty yeah. million pounds if it goes wrong. You sell them. Uh, you can't tell me they can't go and get two or three decent players on loan who are going to guarantee him play in their first team. Something uh, doesn't quite feel right like there. It doesn't. I mean. I we know they're a small club. We know the, yeah. the, the but I mean the te the television. I mean it's hundred million pounds, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. And I just don't. I, of course, I understand it's a small club and they've got to be careful. But where's that money going? Uh, there's no big wages. They're one in the bottom. I think I think they're in the bottom three in terms of the salaries based on the yeah. last few years. I just. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I totally agree. And Sean Dyche saw this coming, Robbie, or, because yeah. last year when in the restart when the contracts were running down, he didn't know who was going to yeah. have who was leaving yeah. on the last day. He wasn't happy mm -hmm. about that. He saw what happened to our other buddy, Eddie Howe. And if you yeah. don't strike when the iron yeah. is hot and your stock stock is up, relegation can happen. And by the way, you're you're out of the picture. You're I'm sad, but you can be out of the picture for Premier League jobs in the future. I didn't see anybody knocking Eddie Howe's door down. Maybe we'll see it when the, we get the yeah. first few firings of the season. Mm -hmm. Sean Dyche for me could is worried that wow, we, I've done so well here, we could yeah. get relegated, and, and I'm back in the Championship with, without maybe yeah. much interest in the Premier League. That's that's mm -hmm. maybe been frustrated and saw this coming maybe six months a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting to see if, if someone like Sean Dyche can keep his spirit, keep the team, yeah. the team focused and, and start etching some points away. I mean, it's always like that first win will gives a breeze a bit of confidence. I'm sure they'll be looking to do yeah. that this week. Yeah. At the top end of the table, Rob, has anything much changed here? We talked about Everton's, you know, great window, especially early on. Arsenal, T Thomas Party has come in. What mm. about the, the two Manchester clubs? Who's in oh, kind of gosh. better shape, if better is the right word? <sighs> who's in better shape i mean city and they're mm. in bad shape 
I mean, you know, in terms of like, we're, well, I know we're four games in, and yeah. you know, you, three for you, some you of them, isn't it? Three for the, the, the big yeah, boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but but given what we've seen early, mm. given what Arsenal are looking like, given what Spurs could potentially look like with Gareth Bale, looks like yeah. he's again in training and playing, Rob. Yeah. Um, I, I am worried about the Manchester sides of the top mm. four. And, and and also, I mean, Chelsea, we're assuming we've got so many good players. And uh, yeah, and, yeah. And Timo Werner scored for mm. Germany in the recent yeah. international. Um, it's really too early to say, Rob, and I'm not I'm not batting the question away, but I, yeah. I, I will absolutely admit that the Man United I had in there, I had Man City in there, I had Chelsea yeah. in there. You know, it does. I, I, I'd be worried if, if I was going to stick with those picks. Again, let's let us get a little bit more um, evidence. Yeah. But, you know, it could be different. North London, mm. North London could fight back this season. Yeah. Given what we've seen, what they've signed. Um, and with City on this, like a knife edge of, can we go again? Or are we going to win, lose quite a few games again, like last season? And maybe with some of their better players missing, drop out the back four. Again, mm. that's that's more unlikely than United. I still yeah. got to think that Man City with the players they've got can absolutely finish in the top four. But I, I tell you, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise to me if we're sat here, Rob, in game match 38 and and City are, are not going to make the top four. I wouldn't wow. be massively wow, surprised. Wow, that, that would... Still be big yeah. for me. I don't think I don't think it drops that far. But I, I look at United, Rob, and I think, well, they haven't really got a foothold on the season. I looked at the three games they played. Lost to Palace, won at Brighton, but played. I mean, he even the manager said we've yeah. got to get away yeah. with one. by Spurs. They're away to Newcastle. I just looked in uh, away to Newcastle, which should be the kind of fix you say, okay, we get back on the road. But not put a performance in yet this season, Rob. Not put a 90 minutes together this season. Yeah. Oli had, or Manchester United, I should say, um, not blaming it totally on the manager, Manchester United had a very poor transfer window. At a time when we talked about them trying to close the gap, a time when we said they need to start to, to add players of a certain level into the football club, they almost go backwards. When you think of what Chelsea have done, that Arsenal land their guy, that, that Liverpool or Liverpool even get Thiago in that brings the mix. Manchester United get Edison Cavani, who's going to earn £250,000 a week, we believe, which kind of feels to me like he's got to play. Because if you're sitting him on the bench, people are going to go, well, why are we paying two hundred and fifty quid for two hundred and fifty grand a week for him and mm. Mason Greenwood's playing on X? So... I just feel that Ollie's got to be careful. He's not backing himself into the corner, mate. Remember, we said. I remember I talked about. There's a. There's been a boost. Yeah. Whatever it's been, you know, like Bruno Fernandes was the yeah. boost. The boost yeah. when he took over. There hasn't mm. been a boost, Rob. This window has not given him a boost. So yeah. let's let's see mm. what the players feel about the manager. Let's see how the players now can kick on if they can kick on yeah. with a long yeah. run of games ahead now. No new excitement. I mean, Edison Cavani will give them a little bit of something, and mm. and but the Champions but, League to come. Yeah, a couple of games. Yeah, it's um, this is this this is going to be a, a crucial couple yeah. of months now. With the Champions yeah. League group yeah. stage is starting, yeah. Yeah. and what they look like. What does Cavani look like? I mean, Edison Cavani. Yeah. My goodness, you know when he I, I've covered the Italian league when he was playing for Napoli. Mm. God, didn't I love him the way he top, played, Rob? Top, top one, yeah. yeah. Top, top, top. And he was, he was about as English a striker as you yeah, could imagine. Yeah, he worked yeah. his socks off. He charged around the front line. I mean, holding the ball up, great in the yeah. air, skillful, scored all sorts of goals. I was pleading for him to go to the Premier League. Obviously, he went yeah. to France and played for PSG. Yeah, 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 but yeah. That's, when, that's when we wanted to see him. And mm. this is this going to be a, a Radomar Falcao or a Zlatan yeah. Ibrahimovic? Is this another yeah. Bastian Schweinsteiger? Or, mm. or, you know, I, I just, I understand what he can bring. And if he can yeah. bring 75% of what he's done in the past, then that's going to be really, really good for United. Yeah. But it's a big risk with injuries. He hasn't played for months. It's just where are the club going with their transfers? Yeah. I thought they were going away, Rob, from, from mm. speculative, yeah. expensive deals that, I mean, where's it going? Where's the long-term? So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sure the United fans 
um, incredibly frustrated now with the yeah. board of directors, etc. the ownership. We keep hearing the same things. And I just wonder how long Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will last in that job until performances and, and spirit in the dressing room and attitude of, of everybody around the club demands some kind of change and big change. And with sporting directors and new managers, something yeah. that I feel we're waiting for that to happen like other clubs have done that. So yeah. you know, I, I'm not optimistic about United going forward. Yes, they might show, uh, uh, you know, in, in some games, but it's got to be consistent. And that's what we haven't seen. But listen, listen, maybe it'll prove yeah. us wrong. And me wrong and, and, and Christmas, Rob, by again. Christmas, I think we'll we'll know where we are with Oli. There's there's a chance yeah. Oli Oli Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't see the new year. Yeah. And I just want to look, I, I was looking at the fixtures. So Newcastle away almost must win. Yeah. Paris Saint Germain in, in the Champions Tough. League. In Tough. Chelsea next league game. RB Leipzig in the Champions League next game. Who can yeah. embarrass you, by the way? Yeah, Arsenal. Arsenal in the in the league. Wow. They go to Istanbul for the Champions League. That's it. Everton uh, uh, the next game. I mean, we could be talking. That's like mid November, mid November, Rob. We, we yeah. could be looking at yeah, who it's knows? Yeah, yeah. No, as like you say, the players are going to come through. There's the, the the rotation of squad. He's you know people are going to have to come in and do jobs. He's got to have to. He's going to have to find the the solution for Pogba. He's got to, mm. if you can find a way to get Donny van de Beek in the, in the, in the team, the, mm. these questions still be asked about the, about this football club. Mm. They're absolutely right. And, and that's why we love it. And that's why yeah. we love the Premier League, Rob. And, and yeah. those results at the end of last match week. Mm. I mean, it's, it's fantastic to see. Yeah. And yeah, United is a big story. It's going to be mm. a really big story going forward in their quest to try and close the gap on some of the, the boys at the top. Anything different on terms of the title race, Rob? Just before we move on to a little, we talk a little bit about the big um, stuff. No, um, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm still okay where I was. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay where I was. I'm not seeing enough yet. I mean, let's revisit this at mm. Christmas and if they're not in the top four or struggling yeah. to make up. But no, I still think they'll be yeah. setting the pace, Rob, and, and the too. rest will be following. Yeah. Talk yeah. about big stories just before we, we close. Just so we, you know, we'll, we'll put it out there. And, and obviously, it's a story we're going to follow and, and obviously have our opinion on. Project Big Picture uh, came out this week that was. We believe, uh, or so reports led us to believe, it was it was being led by Liverpool Football Club and, and Manchester United Football Club, but a whole new look and and restyle of the Premier League, which would mean we go down to eighteen clubs, uh, so there'd be less fixtures, uh, there'd be a different playoff system. The th so two teams would come up, two teams would go down. Third bottom team would play with third, fourth, and fifth in the Championship in a playoff situation. Yeah. It was a position where money would go down, so a quarter of the uh, revenues would go down to the lower league, so National League, EFL, uh, women's football, grassroots football, so really going down the pyramid, which I think are the kind of things that people have liked to hear. People understand, particularly at this moment, clubs are really finding it difficult with no fans in. Mm. I think the big thing, Rob, the, 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 the point that got everybody a little bit worried was that it seemed to be handing control of the league to the mm. big six teams. Mm. That they'd have you know, a say in all the big decisions, a say in the TV rights, a say in the money share, and just can't feel that can work, unfortunately. No, no it can't. And, and, and you're right, Rob, and you go through... And there was, uh, you know, two hundred and fifty million pounds straight yeah. straight away, Rob, to help Absolutely. out with yeah. the COVID crisis of many COVID, lower yeah. clubs. Hundred million pounds for the FA. All yeah. these, these sweeteners, and mm. I kind of some of that I kind of like actually. I like yeah. the eighteen team Premier League uh, yeah. situation, not for yeah, the reason yeah. that they wanted. They want to do yeah. it. The league Cup, they're talking about maybe. So league it's like Cup, okay, yeah, field, help, yeah. help, help, help in the pyramid, lessen mm. the games for the players, yeah. money for for relief. Well, but, but, what, but what they want for it. And I'm afraid that they yeah. can't have that. That's not yeah. the You no, can't they, go from a they one didn't even disguise it that well, did they? It wasn't <laughs> well I mean, I, 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 you got to love the Premier League's one club, one yeah. vote. And 14 yeah. cl clubs have yeah. to vote in a particular way to mm. change some legislation in terms, yeah. terms of how the league is run. And just, just for those who haven't got the details, they want to change all that. It's going to be the top six, as you see it right now, plus Everton, right. West Ham and Southampton, the teams that have been uh, consecutively in the Premier League for the most oh, amount. By the way, can I just ask you to stop you there on one thing? 
West Ham ownership, how would you want them yeah. running the state of English football? Like, yeah. I do not know. Um, yeah. Just in the side. Another side. Aston Villa. You know, won a, won a, won a European Cup at the yeah, Champions League yeah, yeah. before yeah. the City and Spurs and so many others. Yeah. Not Forest. Le Leicester yeah. City. If you can get a Leicester, Leicester City. City. Yeah, Leeds United. Leeds United Villa, I said. The title before Spurs. They're out of it. They're trying to lock in yeah. these... these nine clubs and then of yeah. course six six have mm. to vote to change legislation yeah. can you imagine that rob that the top six really Ever. can mold they can yeah. mold that league to whatever they want it and that's going to yeah. be where they can play more european games with more rest the short yeah. the season is shorter so they can go and play lucrative yeah. games in, yeah. in other parts of the world uh, the, the revenues will change rob yeah. where uh, there's a kind of an equal ish share of tv revenue through yeah. the 20 teams so when you know of what they want in return for that the good yeah, stuff yeah yeah it's can't do it can't can't do it and and just to to bring everybody up to speed on that today the premier league clubs the 20 of them yeah, just i'm not sure if unanimous way. but they voted it out yeah, they blew, really blew it out of the yeah. water it's like we can't we can't be doing things like that so of course what's good about this rob is that it's going to start a conversation and it's already started yeah, the premier league are trying a, a plan absolutely. to help the and this helped me come there. quickly, Rob. You know, I spoke to, to friends at, at lower league clubs, put Port Vale, my own club, spoke to somebody there this month. They're struggling, mate. People are yeah, really yeah. struggling. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. they, they need that money there. But I'm sure it's a yeah. story that's going to yeah. run. We'll yeah. certainly uh, follow it, have our opinion, and, and let our, our viewers know where we are. So I'm afraid, mate, it's, it's the end of, uh, of this one. But full steam ahead from the weekend for the Premier League. Mm -hmm. I think the next few weeks we're going to start to see the shape of the table, those at the top. Those who are comfortable in the middle and one or two, maybe even surprising one or two, is struggling at the bottom. We'll be back on Sunday, October the 18th. So date for your diary, Sunday, October the 18th, when we'll recap all of match day five, including that Merseyside derby. And we'll see if Everton can make it five wins in five and beat the reigning champions. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musto, together with his two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe and be healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe. Make sure you subscribe to watch highlights all season long and always join us every weekend at 7am on NBCSN for Premier League mornings. Plus, make sure you subscribe to Peacock Premium as well, where you can watch exclusively live 175 games and same day on-demand replays of all 380 Premier League matches as well.